managing loads, and load balancing. This is actually a pretty fun segment. I think you're going to like this, uh, this particular nugget. This is, the, uh, this is the part of MetaFrame where we define how many users end up getting on uh, each server in our farm. If we have a lot of different servers in the farm and some we want more users than others, this is the way we get to distribute the load across those, uh, across those MetaFrame servers. We're going to talk about the different types of load evaluators. There's a default evaluator, an advanced, cust uh, an advanced evaluator, and we can also create our own custom evaluators. We're going to talk about when you would want to use each one of these load evaluators. And for the CCA test, you're going to need to know in what situations that you'd use each of these load evaluators. We're actually going to create some and create and assign some load evaluators and show how that process is done. There are some command line tools that you use to, to look and see what the load is on a particular server that are pretty cool. And there's also this load concept of a load manager log, which will give you some idea of, of what's going on behind the scenes and how you can determine if the load management is being done correctly. So moving back to our old friend, the CMC, I brought up the Nugget Farm once again, and we're going to look at another node here in the, uh, in the Citrix Management Console, and that's this node called Load Evaluators. You'll see here that there are two load evaluators that are default, that are, that are present on your system by default whenever you first install Citrix. These two load evaluators are the default and advanced load evaluator. I can view the properties of any load evaluator by right-clicking on it and, view, search, or, and then clicking on load, load evaluator properties. Let's do that now. You'll see here that the default evaluator has just one assigned role set to it, and that's server user load. I've got the option of a number of other available rules that I could apply. Now, I wouldn't necessarily want to apply these to the default evaluators. I'd want to create my own custom ones. But for the purposes of this, the default load evaluator, the, user, the, the assigned role set to it is server user load. All this says is that the, if I assign an application or a server to this load evaluator, it's going to load balance based on the number of users that are presently on that system. So if I have, or if we have uh, two presentation servers in our environment, and presentation server one has four users and presentation server two has three users, obviously the next user is going to get, uh, the, is going to go on presentation server two. So this is what I would use generally if I have uh, Citrix servers that are approximately the same level, the same kind of hardware, the same uh, processing power. And the reason for this is, if I have Citrix servers that are a d of different processing power, let's say one of them is a Pentium 2 and one of them is a Pentium 4 Quad Xeon, I wouldn't, we wouldn't want to put the same number of users on the Pentium 2 as us on the Pentium 4 Quad Xeon because they can't handle the load. So in situations when all of our Citrix servers are very much the same, we want to use this default load evaluator. Now, that's not always the case. Like I said, sometimes we, we have different types of resources uh, assigned per server. Sometimes some, we have some servers that may have more processing power or more, more memory available. In that case, we might want to use the advanced load evaluator. This is our, our other default one that arrives whenever we first install Citrix. This includes CPU utilization, memory usage, and page swaps as the assigned rules for the advanced load evaluator. Now, I want to look at these in turn and look at specifically the information down here below. You can see that when I click on CPU utilization, I get some rule settings for this. And you'll see they're grayed out. They're grayed out because this is the default. This is the, the, the one that comes with Citrix. And so if I want to change these settings, I need to create my own custom ones. But let's look at uh, what, what each of these rule settings are set. This says that I'm going to report full load when processor utilization is greater than 90%. And I'm also going to report no load when processor utilization is less than 10%. This is to say that I've got this range now, and if my system is sitting at below 10%, I'm going to say that it's essentially reporting no load in terms of CPU utilization. And when it's above 90%, well, I'm not going to allow any users to get on the server anymore because I'm saying that it's now at full load. Now, why would we want to do this? We want to do this to make sure that we still always have a little bit of a buffer at the top end so that I mean, if we set this to 100%, then we're going to continue to add users to this server until it's, it's overloaded. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want to reduce the user's experience. And so we enable this to a maximum of 90% to still allow a little bit of buffer for those users that are currently on the system. 
for memory usage, it's similar to CPU utilization. It's report full load when memory usage is greater than 90 and less than 10%. And with page swaps, it's full load when the number of page swaps per second is greater than 100 or less than zero. Now, you'll notice here that this is 100 instead of 90 because this is not a percentage, but an actual value. Now, this is all fine and well, but let's say in your Citrix environment, you have a number of different uh, server types. You have uh, some quad Xeons, you got some Pentium 2s, you got some, some old AMDs, you got all kinds of different resources, and you want to do uh, advanced load evaluation, but the advanced load, eva load evaluator itself isn't, isn't detailed enough for you. It doesn't give you enough granularity. In that case, we can always create our own load evaluators, and we do that by right-clicking and we can either choose to create a new load evaluator, or we can just copy the settings from the advanced load evaluator you see here. We'll give it a new name. Let's just call this our load evaluator. And now, unlike before, I, we can actually choose or, or, or make changes to the upper and lower bounds for these assigned rules. Let's, let's say in this situation, uh, we have a lot of users that have this tendency to spike the processor from time to time. Maybe the, they, they're, they're running a, a, a very powerful application, like a GIS application or a database application or something that requires a lot of processor. And so if we use 90% as our upper bound, then they may, they may spike the processor too much and we'll end up with the other users complaining. So let's lower it down to perhaps 70%. So, so now at 70% load, average load, the users are going to show full load. We're not going to put any more, or the, the, the load evaluator is going to show full load and we're not going to add any more users to that system. We can do the same thing with memory usage. Maybe uh, memory usage may spike as well. But we also now have the ability to add some additional rules. We can add in user load, for example, for the maximum number of users that could be on this system. We can add based on context switches for how often the processor switched between tasks or disk data I.O. Or, or, or disk operations, read and write operations per second. Here's a really cool one, too, called IP range. If we want to, for example, allow a certain client IP addresses to connect to this server, we can do that here. If I click on the IP range and add it to my list of assigned rules, I can add a range for, let's say, 192.168.0.1 through 192.168.0.254. So now this is to say that anybody inside of this, this IP range on the client is going to be allowed access to this server. Similarly, I can say, okay, anybody in that range is not allowed to access this server. But this is very useful if I want to give a certain subset of users more priority or less priority on the system. I can do the same thing with page faults. I can say at certain times of the day or certain days of the week, this server becomes prioritized. And then also back to server user load. This is similar to application user load, but this is based on the use of the entire server, all the applications on that server. When I'm through, I click OK, and you'll see now that I've created our load evaluator. This is an, a load evaluator that the characteristics of which have been enabled, but we haven't actually assigned it yet to any system. Let's do that now. We can assign load evaluators to either a server or we can assign it to an application. In order to assign it to a server, we'll click on the server, and then we'll right-click on the server, and we can choose Load Manage Server. Here you'll see we have the available load evaluators. We have the advanced and the default, the ones that uh, come with the system, and then now we have our load evaluator that we've created. We can click this, we can see the rules that are there, and assign that server to that load evaluator. In the same vein, we can do the same for applications. Let's say I'm not really interested in load evaluating the, the server because I might have a lot of applications that are on that server. But I want to make sure that perhaps this, this Nugget Notepad, for example, is balanced appropriately across multiple servers. In that case, I do the very same thing I did before. We right-click here, we choose Load Manage Application, and we get a little bit different of a screen here. And actually, this screen is, is a little difficult to, uh, to, to follow the first time you look at it. So let me go through this in depth. The first thing you're going to want to do is select the servers that this application is linked to. Once you've selected those servers, you want to add those to the list of selected servers. Now, you'll see here, because I've already load evaluated the, uh, uh, the, the CTX Nugget 1 and CTX Nugget 2 here, they're showing up with just the default load evaluator. What I want to do once I've selected those servers is choose a load evaluator for that application on those servers. In this case, I can choose our load evaluator. If I click OK, 
that completes the task. Now, you actually have to go back into that uh, application to see that the uh, evaluator is now assigned. So like I said, it's a little bit different than what you're used to seeing, but this is the process by which you would load manage an application. So I'm going to go back to uh, our notes here for, the, uh, for this particular nugget. I, I noticed here, or mentioned here that we're going to talk about when would you use each type of load evaluator. And I know I've mentioned this before, but it's very important that you understand that the default load evaluator only manages load based on users, based on the user count for that application or for that server. The advanced load evaluator has additional characteristics involved with CPU usage and memory usage and page file usage that give you some additional capabilities to balance based on resource use you will use the default load evaluator typically if your servers are exactly the same. If they're all Pentium 4, 2 gigs of RAM, you, you get the idea. If they're exactly the same types of hardware, then you're probably going to use the default load evaluator. If they are not of the same type of hardware, you're going to use the advanced load evaluator. And in situations where the advanced load evaluator isn't enough, you can create your own custom evaluators. So, so be very careful, be very aware of that whenever you're, you're using and creating these load evaluators. Okay, so we've taken the time to talk about the load evaluators and create them and assign them, but the next question you're probably thinking is, well, if I've assigned these load evaluators to a particular application or a particular server, how am I going to know that it's actually doing its job? So we have a number of command line tools and also the load manager log that help us know, help us recognize that the evaluators are doing their job. It shows us, in the case of the command line tools, a numerical representation of how loaded a particular server or application is. In the load manager log, it gives us a graphical representation of how that is. So let's start with in just these command line tools and, and take a look at them. I think you're going to like these. The, the command line tools, I think, are, are, are very friendly. They're, they're, they're easy to use. So we really haven't spent a lot of time talking about these command line tools yet, but these are command line tools that are available as part of the default installation of Presentation Server. So as you install Presentation Server, you get access to them immediately. You can connect to them with, uh, by typing in the word query. If I type in the word query, you can see I get a list of different parameters that I can enter in to query information about my Presentation Server farm. So if I type query farm, I'll get information about the, some of the servers that are in this farm, and here I have CTX Nugget 2 because it's not the server that's currently I'm, I'm connected to. If I type in query farm slash question mark, you'll see that I get a lot of additional options that I can choose to query information about those servers. The one that I'm interested in here is this one slash load. So let me remove the question mark and add in slash load, and now you'll see that I have two servers in the farm. The load on CTX Nugget 1 is 3868, and the load on CTX Nugget 2 is 0. Now what do these numbers mean? Presently, there are no users logged into the CTX Nugget 2. And also, there are no users that are connecting to published applications or published desktops on CTX Nugget 2. On CTX Nugget 1, if I switch back to my management console, you'll see that the administrator user is currently logged in at the console right here. And the amount of resource use that is being done by that administrator user at the console is equal to uh, this, this number, 3868. Now, the, the actual absolute value of the number isn't necessarily as important as its relative value. And this number will change, actually. If I do CTX query farm, or, or query farm load again, I'll get 3763 because the, the use that is currently being used as for example, if I go to Task Manager and see what processes are actively running on this server, will change over time. Now, earlier we talked about how deploying desktops is a significantly greater resource use to a server than deploying published applications, and this is the reason why. When I publish a desktop to a particular user, there's a lot more stuff that has to get pushed to that user than just a published application. So when we were talking about that, that Nugget Notepad instance, we really only have to deploy the Nugget Notepad itself and a little bit of wrapper code to go with it, but specifically that one executable. So to give you a more visual representation of what I'm seeing, I've, I've actually logged out of the Citrix server from the console, and here on my Windows XP box, I've started the Nugget Notepad application. I've double-clicked Nugget Notepad here in Program Neighborhood Agent. On my domain controller, I've went ahead and connected to a server desktop. Now you'll see that the server desktop here is connected to CTX Nugget 1 as the server that's hosting the desktop. 
And CTX Nugget 2 is currently hosting the Nugget Notepad. And I know this because CTX Nugget 2 has 100 for the user load, and CTX Nugget 1 has 5334. There is a substantially additional amount of stuff that's got to get loaded to power this full desktop. If I bring up the Citrix Management Console, I can actually get more information about the processes that are being consumed by those sessions. So let me launch the Citrix uh, Management Console, and I want to go down here to Servers, and then I want to click on the Processes tab. You'll notice CTX Nugget 1 has the administrator user that has all of these processes that have to run in order to run that full desktop. For CTX Nugget 2, I've actually logged on as bnugget. And you'll see with bnugget, there's that notepad.exe process. There's only these three other processes that are required to power this notepad.exe. So I got four processes here. I've got significantly more here. That's why anytime I go to do a query farm slash load, my use for a published desktop is always going to be higher than for a published application. Okay, so I've logged back into uh, CTX Nugget 1 here, and there's two additional command line tools I want to show you. In addition to that query farm load, there's also the query farm zone app command. Now, for the servers in this particular zone, and this zone is only includes CTX Nugget 1, this will tell me what the application load is for all the applications inside this zone. Now, the Nugget Notepad currently has an app load of 7142. Now, the first thing you're going to say is, wait a minute, I thought it was 100. Again, the absolute values of these numbers aren't necessarily as important as the relative values between this number and the other numbers. You'll also ask, well, wait a minute, I see 99,999 here for this app load. Anytime you see five nines, this actually means that an evaluator has not been assigned to this particular application name. So realistically, I've got an app load of 7142. If I add an evaluator to any of these particular, uh, th these particular applications, then this is going to change from five nines to the relative application load. The other bit command I want to show you is called query farm slash zone load. This will tell me for all of the servers in this particular zone what the server load is. So remember, application load, server load, and this is the total load for that particular server. This is a particularly handy command, not so much so when I've just got one server in the, in the zone, but if I have a lot of servers in the zone, this is how I can uh, locate servers that are being hit too much. It is this command that I would use to tweak my load evaluators, if I wanted to maybe give them more processor or less memory based on whether or not they're getting too many users on that server. So those are the three commands, query farm slash load, query farm slash zone app, and query farm slash zone load that you need to know in order to, to view the, uh, the current load on your system. Now, maybe you're not a command line kind of person. Maybe you're, you're more of a, a graphical person and graphics have more meaning to you. In that case, there is also a solution for you as well. If we go back into the CMC and we go to any particular server, we can click this tab called Load Manager Monitor. And here, for the load evaluator that is assigned to this particular server, we can see how that load evaluator is currently doing. This load evaluator has three rules, page swaps, CPU utilization, and memory usage. And so if we let this graph update over a period of time, we'll be able to see how that server is changing over time. Same thing here with CTX uh, Nugget 2. I can look at the load manager monitor for server user load. Now I show these to you secondly because personally I find the command line method easier to use. It's easier to line up number values against each other. And here you have to kind of look at this graph and then shift over to this other graph and look at this graph to see how it looks. And also you'll notice that these don't update very fast. This, uh, this particular load manager hasn't updated yet. If I go to the Actions tab under Load Manager, I can change the settings for how often it, it updates, but the minimum amount of time it takes is 15 seconds to update load evaluator data and then a whole minute to update the monitor itself. So you're going to be sitting here waiting for a while to get the graphical data you need. However, if you are a graphical person and you like the GUI, this tool is useful for you for, for getting a graphical representation for how loaded your server is. The last thing I want to show you is under load evaluators. There are two additional tabs, one for usage reports and one for log. This under usage reports is where I will find all of the load evaluators and where they're assigned. You'll see that the CTX Nugget 1 server has our, our load evaluator set to it, whereas CTX number 2 has the default load evaluator. If I look at applications, you'll see this Nugget Notepad currently has our load evaluator for all the servers. 
I can reverse that and say, okay, for the evaluators, where are they positioned as well? Under log, you'll see here it's blank. In order to enable the log under the actions menu under log, I have to actually enable logging. And what that will tell me is anytime a client attempts to connect to a session with a connected load evaluator. If I go back to my Nugget 1 and I restart the Nugget notepad here, it will begin the connection process. And if I look back on CTX Nugget 1, after this connection process is completed, you'll see that the log has updated to show that Nugget Notepad has been sent to, or has been sent to Nugget 1 from the server CTX Nugget 2. So what did we talk about today? We talked about load balancing and load managing. We talked about the different types of load evaluators and when they're useful. We created and we assigned some load evaluators. And then we also showed once we've assigned those load evaluators, how we can verify their use and also how we can see some numerical and graphical representations of the use of our servers so that we can tweak the load evaluators to give us the best performance possible. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.